we are marched with midwives, and all around the country, thousands of us are standing shoulder to together, shoulder to shoulder together, right now, demanding that the government takes urgent action to save the NHS maternity services. Things are really bad out there. We cannot understate at all the maternity crisis. This day last year, we again, thousands of us, about 16,000 people took to the streets to protest exactly the same issue. And we are no better on one year later. Things have actually got worse. Women are dying in greater numbers than they were this time last year. Today, we stand in vigil because we are in grief. Midwifery mid services in the UK are in crisis. Midwifery is under threat and the needs of women, birthing people and their families are not being met. We are one group across the country. Midwives, doulas, families, parents, healthcare professionals and individuals who collectively want to show that enough is enough and the government can no longer make any excuses. Successive governments over several years have undervalued and underfunded midwifery services to the point now where people are suffering. Midwifery is a profession that desperately needs protecting. Without midwives, birth is at risk. Without midwives, families are not safe. And without midwives, women and birthing people and families are not getting the care that they need. When women and families are well, so are their communities and so are our countries. When midwives are expected to work shifts with no breaks. When midwives are expected to care for women and babies in unimaginable ratios. When midwives are expected to miss their lunch breaks, miss time with their families, not go to the toilet, midwifery becomes unsafe. Midwives experience burnout and leave their profession in huge numbers. This is not okay. When we ran out of toilet paper at the start of the pandemic, you panicked. When we ran out of fuel, you panicked. And when we ran out of lorry drivers, you panicked. We're running out of midwives. And today, we are standing to demonstrate because we are collectively furious that our government is not addressing this at the same level of concerns as the shortages for toilet paper. <laughs> A recent RCM survey of midwives found that 60% of staff are thinking of leaving the profession. For every 30 newly qualified midwives, 29 other midwives are leaving the system. The retention rate is appalling. Bullying and toxic hierarchical management systems are stifling innovation, silencing whistleblowing, and causing psychological harm. Top-down pressures that include fear of disciplinary or legal action result in a lack of midwifery autonomy and an erosion of the traditional role of the midwife. Black women have a 3.7 times higher risk of dying in pregnancy than white women. And, then, and this is within the childbearing year. Parents are reporting bullying and coercion and threats are used to ensure compliance. Trauma amongst parents and midwives alike is rife. Government promises are not being kept. The Better Births report is over five years old and con continuity of carer and best start teams cannot be implemented due to staffing issues and lack of funding. Damage to babies and families ripples out across the whole of society and creates the need for more social and health care later. Fixing the beginning of life is an investment and be, re, be assured this affects all of us across society. But it's, this is not a women's issue. This is a healthcare crisis because every baby, boy or girl, born within this system is going to be an adult that will be running the country, running our institutions and running our systems. And if we do not 
creates the environment in which families can thrive at the beginning of a baby's life, then we are setting them up to fail in ways that we cannot imagine right now. The maternity system is not just under pressure or even on its knees. It is utterly broken and not fit for purpose. The birth of a child should be a wonderful, life-changing time for a mother and her whole family. It is a time of new beginnings, of fresh hopes and new dreams, of change and opportunity. It is a time when the experience we have can shape our lives and those of our babies and our families forever. So thank you. Thank you for having the integrity, integrity and the courage to stand with me today and demand better because what we currently have is not even the bare minimum of what we deserve. We deserve to be thriving, not barely surviving. So thank you very much. And I want to start off by saying a huge thank you to Siobhan and everybody else that joined together to make this happen. Siobhan, the, you, the effort that you have gone to and the, the passion and heart that you have put into this means so much to me. And I know that it means so much to all of my midwifery colleagues, all the midwifery support workers, obstetricians that are being hurt by this crisis, but by the families as well. Without, without you, we wouldn't all be here today. So. Thank you so, so very much for doing this. I <laughs> so this time last year when we all got together, I have to say I was heartbroken. I was in a horrible, horrible um, place in the periphery. I was really struggling and just desperate for things to be better. And I have to say this year I'm just angry. <laughs> I'm really angry because I have, I've, had, I've felt the need to leave the NHS in the last year. I didn't really want to. I want more than anything to be able to work within this system and be able to provide brilliant care for women, birthing people and their families. But in order to do that, I have to pour from a completely empty cup and it left me broken. And I know so many of my colleagues are working day in, day out, incredibly, incredibly hard, missing their breaks, finishing late, going above and beyond, simply to provide safe care for the families of Norfolk and, and across the UK. And I don't, I don't know where this is going to end. If we don't do something now, if the government don't listen to us now, where, where is this going to end? Where is this going to end? Because I know full well there are huge numbers of midwives feeling the same as me that have been pushed to leave the system because they physically aren't able to provide the level of care that they want to. And there are thousands of midwives still in the system fighting every single day but hurting because of it. And it's not, it's not good enough. It's just simply not good enough. So thank you all so much for coming out today to show your support because it, it means the world to us that you care um, and that you want to see this made better too. It's, yeah. <laughs> we, we all deserve so much better. We midwives deserve so much better. The people we support deserve so much better. Um, so thank you for coming to stand with us to shout to our government to try and get them to listen because enough is enough. Thank you. Yeah.
there's a reason why that is happening. If we aren't funding the support that is needed for those people to effectively do their jobs, they will take the blame. But the impact of taking the blame is that they are breaking something. You can only be blamed for so long before it gets to the point where we say, do you know what? See you later. I'm gone. And we don't need that. What we need is people who are working in a job that they love, who are supported, and who are taking blame for things that are ultimately outside of their control. I worked clinically as a midwife for a period of time and left because ultimately it didn't serve me and it didn't serve those who I wanted it to. Now, what the system runs on is goodwill and basically enforcing a moral compass that only benefits them. And until we decide that actually our goodwill is not sufficient, goodwill is not paying your bills, I don't know about, I don't know about any of you, but goodwill is only going to take you so far. And so we need to then work on actual structural and systemic changes, and that will only happen when the government pay attention. Until then, we will get this, we will have trauma. We will have trauma from midwives, from mothers, from fathers, from children, the people that we are supposed to be advocating for. And that is impossible to do when those who are looking after us are unsupported, uncared for, worn down, and ultimately leaving the job in droves. So if we want a better service, if we want a better system, if we want better care and support, if we want midwives who stay in their jobs and women who aren't scared to enter this system to be supported, to birth their children, we need work done from the top all the way down to the bottom. Until then, we will be here every year until the system breaks. And that is what we don't need. So thank you all for coming out today and supporting the midwives, supporting the families, Hopefully, hopefully, we will be heard. But until then, we'll keep shouting. Thank you. for example, but you will get through it and it will get better. And usually it does. Their job is to apply evidence-based knowledge, skill and experience to the innate desire to help people and to make the story that stays with you forever a happy one. And if you're one of those not always cases, the midwives are still there for you, so why wouldn't we be there for them? If it goes wrong, it's all too easy to blame the person at the cutting edge. But where would we be without people willing to bust a gut to get you that happy ending? Knowing that they may not always succeed, learning from experience, and still carrying on caring. You're quite often out of your comfort zone when you need a midwife, and their being with you changes everything. 
when governments talk about making tough decisions, we need to be very wary because we know who will have it toughest. The rich of the poor will tend to live and die like the families we're born into. And as the narrative moves from levelling up to austerity mark two, the hardship for many is intolerable and should not be tolerated. Midwives should not have to work in intolerable conditions. And people should not have to give birth in intolerable conditions. The NHS is an insurance scheme where we share the risks and pay to help each other out, but it's so much more than that. Our attachment to it was described by Marco Fortillo as the nearest the UK has to a shared religion. And for good reason, it's the socialised expression of our best selves, the selves that apply systemic, universal and incredibly clever actions to our natural compassion for each other. One Norwich mother told me her care was fantastic, even when she had complications and needed home visits for 10 days. Her friend in London was less snappy and took longer to get over the initial difficulties. A mother of a four month baby told me she was really enjoying motherhood, but would not have been so happy and so confident if she hadn't had that early help and kindness. midwives is that we listen. But who listens to mothers and who looks after the, the midwives? Not apparently those in charge of the NHS of the highest levels who are tolerating the appalling conditions that are driving midwives out at such alarming rates. So on a theme of listening I'm going to quote a senior midwife who's a friend of a friend. People think that the things that came out of Offenden are shocking. You would find those things in every unit if you looked. You cannot provide a service with no staff, and the staff you have are on their knees. But no one's listening and the hospitals are blamed. It's utter BS, and I'm hardly effing sick of it. <laughs> Another said, I've been a midwife for 15 years and not much longer, I reckon. And that's a massive problem. We are literally hemorrhaging staff. The newly qualified come and they're all enthusiastic, but they just can't cope. They leave. They go to jobs for more money, better hours, and when you don't have two lives in your hands and no support, because the midwife in charge is looking after three women herself. I've spoken to two this week who are having panic attacks and crying before work. One left and the other is going to. I think as midwives we are struggling. We want to work and do the best possible for our women, whether it's antenatal, in labour or postnatal. Often we aren't able to provide that due to staffing issues or activity in excess of what our unit is designed for, even when we're fully staffed. I'd say that, I, I would say this is the main sort of distress for most of our profession, but it's added to by not getting meal breaks, being unable to leave work on time, constant increase in tasks and responsibilities, without any extra time or allowance or recognition. And I would say from having worked in the NHS that they're always adding to your workload and rarely is anything ever taken away from it. Does anyone think this would be tolerated if the people at the top had babies? I think if they did, midwives would be adequately or maybe even well paid, get decent breaks and be supported to do their jobs well. So what can we do? I'd like to start with simple moral support for our midwives. Read their manifesto and raise the profile and demand an end to the things that make them unable to continue. People create life events like weddings and graduations and the like, but no day is more life-changing than the day you give birth. The leather is in your body, your head and your heart, but not on the wall. Rarely discussed with children's birthdays and never ever forgotten. We all want a fairer, safer world for our babies to grow up on. And that includes the babies who are going to have babies of their own. We need to reverse privatisation of the NHS. We don't need more austerity. We need more investment in safer births.
So let's read, respect, share and act on the Midwives Manifesto. It starts with listening and funding and enabling people who, to work who are willing to. And we need to reduce the workload massively. We need more transparency, more money, more flexibility. And if midwives need our support on the packet lines, let's show up for them like they've showed up for us.
side. Bele mama, bele mama, yeah. Bele mama, bele mama, yeah. Bele mama, bele mama, bele mama, bele mama, bele mama, yeah. Bele mama, bele mama, yeah. Bele mama. Well done, everyone. Um, I can get my guitar out and do some of you guys, but I won't be able to hold the microphone. So you have to listen carefully, or unless somebody would like to be a mic stand. Amazing.